We talked last week a little bit about the Gospel of Matthew being written as a message to the Jewish inhabitants of Israel and Greece, a way to convince them of the story of Jesus taught, told in their context. Equally so, it was long thought, and still is somewhat thought, that this prologue to John is a way of tapping into Greek philosophy. Uh, the Greek writer Philo spent many, 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 many words, many words, many words, meditating on this incarnation of lights, this idea of the logos, which we cannot actually translate accurately. And this is what I mean by saying that here we get into a mystery, some truths that are not facts. Because as we saw last week in Matthew, there are some historical stories that may seem like facts, but are not necessarily facts. And here we get something that doesn't even look like a fact that you could prove or disprove. And this is why we are in church. Because this passage gets at essential truths about our worship, about our religion, that we cannot learn from looking in history books, that we cannot learn simply by looking literarily at what it is talking about. We are getting at these natures of the world we cannot quite grasp when we talk about this thing that was with God and was God the light that was, and then came into being. These are all contradictions in our life. But John's Gospel has a purpose too. And it is to remind us that this story of Jesus is not just the story of a man who lived. It is the story of a person that was formed out of the things in the universe that had always been and had come to remind everyone that these things had always been and so that when people ran into a darkness as happened in first century Israel under occupation by the Romans that there were lights that were greater than the torches of the Roman armies that there were sensibilities and miracles out there that went beyond our experiences and were in us as surely as our own breath was. And this is the incarnation in John, the reminder that there is the capacity for having this light through Jesus who came to love us, to be with us, as Jesus was with God in the beginning. And this is all very confusing for those of us who are used to facts and to stories and to lessons that tell us what this all means. But this is why you hired me. Because this is why it matters that there was an incarnation that there was a truth that goes beyond our experience. Because if we look at the world only through our experience, we have a very limited slice of it. What we have in the Incarnation is the reminder that Jesus was bigger than our view of the world. It was bigger than the view of the world of the Greeks. It was bigger than the view of the world of the Romans. <laughs> This was a greater view of the world in which all people have the power and the choice to participate. <laughs> Not everyone could become a citizen of Rome. Not everyone was born a Jew with the covenant with God at Sinai that that meant. But in Jesus was the ability for us all to tap into the creation of the world, to share in the light that was with God and was God and to share it with other people. Because when light meets with light, the shadow is driven away. And so in this time and in this place, the question is, how do we bring the light to other people? To let them know that they are not children of darkness, but that they too can live in the brightness of light and hope. And every church has a different answer. 
And my answer is this, where is the darkness? The boundaries of society. When we are suffering from mental illness, the darkness and the shadows come to overtake us, and the light is blotted out. And so we see people committing suicide because they think they're all alone. And sometimes all it takes is someone to walk in and say, no, I love you. Sometimes that can be the light that drives the shadows out just for a day, just for an hour, just for enough time to live until tomorrow. And sometimes people who see those around them who have more money, more warmth, more food, fewer struggles, are in the same spot wondering, why am I not good enough? And sometimes what it takes is someone reaching out and saying, you are not lesser because you have less. You are loved. Now, as always, sometimes people fear revealing to their families things about them they think would bring shame. <coughs> Maybe it is mental illness. Maybe it is that they've lost all their money. Maybe it's that they're gay and don't know how their family will react. And to all of these people who still suffer at the boundaries of society, not sure whether they are acceptable, whether they are loved, we can offer them the choice that we make to be children of the light, to share the love of Jesus Christ with them and bring them hope and the sure knowledge that as God loved the world at Sinai and as love God loved the world at the birth of Christ, so does God love you now and so do we. And this is the power of the incarnation. It is not us and our own consciences only, but this is the narrative of history bending toward justice and love that is told to us in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. So when you think back on this great mystery and you wonder what it all means, know this. Jesus is the light of the world and that light can shine in us to everyone.